Hi, this is Wes Fryer, and today is Sunday, May the 26th, 2013. And in this screencast, I'd like to talk briefly about a process I'm in the midst of doing where I am having to migrate all of my podcasts. I've published about 403 podcasts since 2005 um, here on my website, and I'm having to migrate those over to a new web host, and that's causing me to do some different things. So I'm going to talk a little bit about this, and if you're a podcaster, uh, perhaps this will help you either plan ahead or help you in the process of doing something similar if you end up needing to move where your hosted podcasts are. Um, I use a blogging platform called WordPress, and WordPress is awesome. Um, I think I just recently heard it, it powers something like 20% of the websites on the web, um, it's open source. It is available to use on a hosted service called WordPress.com that anybody can just sign up for. But if you want to run your own server, then um, you need to pay a hosting company. And for a variety of reasons, I am switching my hosting company. And I have selected WP Engine as the hosting engine for, or the web hosting company for for my uh, blog and so I um, actually and I don't have this one I I used a service called uh, WP Valet which was really helpful and they were recommended by WP Engine and actually migrated my website and they moved five gigabytes of podcast files that I've had um, over to Amazon S3 and if you're not familiar with Amazon S3 um, it is a cloud-based um, storage service, and it's pretty amazing because you, you really just pay pennies for, you know, what would cost a lot more money to host other places. And so it can be a really good place to host content like podcasts that you're going to stream um, because it, you just don't have to pay very much for it. Um, one of the disadvantages is that there are, you know, places, and I've been in definitely schools before that block Amazon S3. So when you put your content there, it might be blocked, you know, in some schools. But your website can get blocked um, in, in schools as well. One of the sites that I had looked at using uh, years ago uh, was called Libsyn, and Libsyn is a very popular and outstanding podcast hosting service, and um, uh, friends of mine that were really a lot more into podcasting and a lot more savvy about that had, had kind of let me onto that. But um, when I went to WP Engine, they recommended that, you know, you put everything on Amazon S3. So that's what I have done. I have been using a WordPress plugin called PodPress since 2005. And one of the things I've really liked about PodPress is that it gives statistics, or it can give, depending on how you have it configured and set up, statistics on your individual podcast so it'll tell you how many times your podcast has been played or at least someone has started to play it you don't know how long they have you know played it if they listen to the whole thing YouTube actually gives you that kind of tracking to know you know how far along did somebody watch your video before they stopped or did they watch the whole thing so these metrics or statistics are you know kind of interesting um, to have they don't actually work now on my current um, web host the way that they have w, the WordPress configured, um, but oh well, you know that's just that's just part of it. But I'm still using PodPress as the way to put a player inside my posts when I have a podcast um, to see kind of what that looks like. I'll go over here to my um, latest podcast and I'll go ahead and click on that link. And as that loads up, you're going to see a player appear down here below the description and it also has a download link for people to be able to directly download it and to be able to play it. Now, PodPress will create a feed for you, but I switched at some point to using a product called Feed for All, and Feed for All is a separate software program that you can use to create the RSS feed, and that's what people actually use to subscribe to your podcast. And if this all sounds rather complicated, you know, it is. Um, there are some really nice solutions that take care of all this for you. The one I've been using most recently is called Spreaker. And uh, Spreaker takes care of all this stuff for you. You just record with an app, publish it, and it takes care of all of your, um, all these kind of details. So um, this is one that I did uh, last week. 
and it you know it shows plays and downloads and takes care of all that stuff for you but if you're doing it yourself you know I've really liked feed for all and um, you know I'm committed to it at this point but here's what I'm ending up needing to do um, I need to go into each and every one of my posts that are an old post and I've got to change the link here that goes to the actual podcast and then I also have to change it in my feed because what I had done was, you know, I've, I've had my content move over to Amazon S3 but I had previously in my feed used a PodPress generated link which was a tracking link and when people clicked it that's how it you know used to show here how many people had downloaded the podcast. So what I've done is I've started a Google Doc here <laughs> showing my podcast and I started you know my most recent podcast 403 and I've been going through and doing this and I'll, I'm just going to quickly show you um, the steps. So I'm on podcast 356 here so I've searched in my uh, WordPress for my uh, all my podcasts that have that category and I'm going to go ahead and open the edit view and then the uh, preview view of the podcast so here's podcast 356 one of the things I also need to fix here is um, I have a plugin that allows anytime I use a header which has actually been deprecated um, in the latest HTML specification or uh, maybe that's the CSS specification so anyway it creates this table of contents at the top and so I've got to take that out so this isn't using that kind of a tag several things to fix so here's what I end up doing um, I'm on podcast 356 so I'm gonna go here to my um, my feed for all application go down to podcast 356 and the first thing I do is actually copy the date and I'm gonna save that in text wrangler which is a uh, a little program that I like to use uh, for text because it will if I don't save that it will automatically put today's date and I don't want today's date as the publication date for the podcast in the feed so that's the first thing that I do um, the next thing I do is I come over here to uh, Amazon and I'm gonna need to find my podcast for August the 29th so I go over here into my uh, buckets and open up 2011 and again I'm looking at for the podcast on August 29th so here is oh sorry I'm already in 2010 I did all my 2011 that's why I wasn't seeing that date so here's August what did I say it was yeah 29th so it'll be this one August 28th so I'll go ahead and select that and get the properties for it check the permissions making sure that it is set for everybody to open or download it copy this link this is actually the new link that I've got to go in and fix so now I'm going to come here to my podcast. I'm going to have to change. This is just something about the way I formatted this. Take off the header or the heading three, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and bold where it says display podcast. That short code, which is WordPress short code, is what actually puts in the podcast uh, download link and player when you use the PodPress player. Now I'm going to scroll down to where PodPress is. And this is what I've got to copy and or uh, this is what I've got to replace. I'm replacing that old address that was there um, with the new one and I'm going to go ahead and click update. So now after that update finishes I can go ahead and reload this page and you know right now if I went ahead and clicked on this link it, it doesn't find it. It says not found um, because when I migrated to my new web host all my podcast content you know didn't migrate but now when I click update not only does that table of contents thing go away from the top but when I go ahead and click this it's Sunday August 28 it plays the podcast and so that podcast works now the other thing I have to do is go over here to feed for all and I have to change the uh, put the address in twice I put it here um, under required items and then under optional I go ahead and change the enclosure tag to be have that fixed as well and then the last thing that I do is I copy this address that I put in here and I save it so that is now saved on uh, the feed now I've had some trouble going to the FTP server from within feed for all so the other thing that I have to do and I don't do this after every one but I log into my FTP client which I use a uh, free program called Cyberduck and then um, I've got to find my um, my uh, feed.xml file which is here um, in this folder and now uh, in order to actually update it I drag it over drop it 
into that window, which is in the podcast window, and I go ahead and update it. So if I want to make sure that people right away are going to be able to, um, you know, the feed's going to be updated, I can go to, to feed burner and I could update it, but that'll happen automatically and I won't do that. So, goodness gracious, isn't that ridiculous? Yes, indeed it is. Uh, I guess the last thing that I need to do is um, I go ahead and put, put these links in here to show myself and kind of keep track that, hey, I have done these. I've done, I'm done with Podcast 356. And so my son asked me tonight, he's a freshman in high school, hey, Dad, is that something I can help you with? And I'm like, yeah, you can do that, but it's a lot of steps. It might be that I'll show him the screencast and have him start to do this because, you know, this is something I'm going to have to dog on repeat you know, I've got to do it a total of 403 times. Um, hmm. I've really hesitated to move web hosts. Um, I, I've known that it would be kind of a painful process. If it wasn't for these podcasts, it wouldn't have been nearly as painful a process, but it certainly, you know, is time consuming to do this. Um, the benefit is Amazon S3, you know, is, is I think a very reliable and, um, you know, very inexpensive web host. And so even if I end up moving my podcast at some point to a different web host, my, my, or sorry, my blog to a different web host, my podcasts won't have to move again. And so while this is a painful process, hopefully it's kind of a one-time thing and I'm not going to have to do this again. And of course, if I didn't have so many podcasts, then I wouldn't have to worry about it. But I guess my advice to you, maybe I should have started with this, is if you are hosting a podcast and you plan on doing a ton of them, you might want to consider putting your podcasts on a separate site like Libsyn or like Amazon S3 because this will give you portability if your web host ends up changing at some point. You will not have to change the links to your podcast, theoretically. Now, if you use a plugin or something like that, I mean, that changes theoretically. You might, you might have to. But anyway... I hope that's been helpful to you, and I wish you luck in podcasting. I want to point out one last thing, that my latest project, which is called Mapping Media to the Common Core, has 12 different kinds of media products that you and your students can create. One of those, the third one, is called Radio Show, and that is um, an internet-based you know, radio show that's a pre-recorded audio file, usually. So there's different tools and suggestions, tutorials, apps, uh, things that you can check out and examples of student audio uh, podcasts or radio shows and, you know, mobile recorders, microphones, lots of stuff like that. So check that out on maps.playingwithmedia.com and you can click the link for radio shows to check that out. Good luck and happy podcasting.